I'm dealing with a lot of clients at the moment where I've been helping them with their debts, get rid of the credit cards and the high car loans and the and high personal loans with lending club and lending tree and all that. And they're at this moment where they're like, oh yeah, I got some excess. I got some free cash flow. And they're like, Denzel, I need that policy right away. I'm like, well, hold on. You're making six, 7,000 a month and you're cash flowing three. That's really awesome. How do we go from seven to 14, seven to 21, seven to 70,000? That's, that's not gonna happen through IBC, through cash value life insurance. That's not gonna happen through uh, crypto necessarily. Um, that's not gonna happen through stocks overnight. That's not gonna happen. So I, I, I know you're, you're getting on something. Uh, so expand on that, please, please. That's where I think the, the ultimate value is gonna come out of this. So if somebody came to me in the situation that you just described, then I'd probably have some follow-up questions. Okay, let's roll. Okay, play. let's role play. Perfect. Here's what I would ask you. Let's go back to the mortgage because I think this is one of the things that is really misunderstood, especially in the realm of people who are trying to get debt free. Um, I had a buddy of mine, he's a, a pilot for, he used to be uh, Jesse Duplantis's private pilot. I don't know if you knew who that is. He's a, yeah, uh, he's a televangelist. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, the dude's hilarious. I now, know, I know. You, know you, you can can say whatever you want about whether you agree with him or disagree with him theologically, but he's funny, you know? And, um, you know, he, even the times that I've met him personally because of my buddy Dave, he, uh, <laughs> it, he he's just, he's funny. He, he just tells some stories and you're going, it's like, you know, hanging out with a, a stand-up comedian all the time. <laughs> with that said, Dave had a very... Um, traditional thinking in that he wanted to save all of his money and pay cash for his house. That was his, that was his dream. And he knew I was in real estate and I'm buying houses and doing all kinds of stuff. And he's still saving up money to buy his house. And I said, Dave, you can't outrun it. He said, can't outrun what? I said, inflation. He said, what do you mean? Well, this was back then. I'll give you today's numbers. Today's numbers is that inflation is sitting somewhere between six and six and a half percent. Insane. Six and six and a half percent. Now, here's the, the crazy part. That number does not factor in food or gas. Do you know that, Denzel? It does not factor in food or gas, which is a major expense amongst all households. So Year over year, 50% increase in both. Wow. In the last uh, year, two years. 12 months. 12 months. Gotcha. So... We're feeling this impact of expenses that are going out, but it's it's a, a it's felt, but it's not told to us. It's sort of like a lot of times people are talking about um, they're talking about unemployment rates. But you have to understand one of the things I learned many years ago in college, which by the way I didn't tell anybody this, but it, it probably makes sense since I'm busting out with. Um, some of this Bible stuff. I, I'm a former pastor as well. I, I was a pastor until 2001. And so I, I've gone to Bible college um, and studied and uh, I'm, I'm probably a little bit further along than um, your average coach. But with that said, when I was in college, I took an economics course. And one of the things they taught was statistics. And statistics, they said, here's the thing about statistics. Statistics is the art of making numbers say anything that you want them to say. Wow. So when people tell you it's a percentage, a percentage of this, it's increased by this percentage, it's downcreased by this percentage, based on what? If you can take the equation and you can move the variables around and depending on what's there, you can make it say anything you want it to say. Right. That's why people say 98% of statistics are made up, <laughs> which that probably is made up too, because nobody really knows. You see, when you're talking about all these things, it really creates a problem. So back to inflation. If you have an, a mortgage right now at two, 3%, here's what I would ask you, Denzel. If you pay that down for every dollar that you put in to that, I'll go, give you a little quotation marks, that in, if you can create that investment, how much money are you saving? And most for every people- dollar, Every dollar you put into your, yeah. your house, to pay down your your mortgage. What are you making on that money? How much is that money making you? Right. Most people cannot answer that. 
Um, so I'm going to take a guess just for example here. If I'm making extra. If you know the number, give it to me. You no. Know, okay, cool. If I'm making extra payments via yep. my net cash flow onto my mortgage, that saves me, say, roughly 3 to $4 in interest for every dollar I put in in principal. Let's, let's call it that or something like that because they they're looking at the fact that okay it's a it's a three hundred thousand dollar four hundred thousand dollar mortgage over 30 years i'm gonna pay two times that you know six hundred thousand or whatever the case may be All right so these are definitely example not let's just use a hundred thousand dollar house okay let's do that so i got a hundred k mortgage okay. and uh rates are super low so can i do say 2.5 percent whatever you want to do all right yeah because that's realistic right now okay and two five two point five percent is that a 15 year mortgage uh let's let's do uh 30. Or is that a 30 year mortgage yeah let's do 30. okay so let's say that your payment on that is what 500 bucks a month piti okay okay so that is obviously going to get broken down as a portion of that's going towards principal part portion of that's going towards interest part portion of that is going towards taxes and insurance now we're taught that that mortgage is going to cost us a lot of money over those 30 years, right? Yes. Because we're paying interest on $100,000 for 30 years. That's, that's expensive. So we need to pay it down as quickly as possible. So for every dollar that we put in there, let's say that we owe $60,000 because we've been making aggressive payments. So we would write 60,000 under the hundred. Okay. Okay. So the question is, how much are we making on the $40,000 that we've paid down? Right. How much does equity cost or equity make us? Formulate that for me. How do we, how do we make sense of that? How do we calculate okay. that? So if you have $40,000 in there, most people would say that it is making us the 2.5%, right? They say that it's, well, it's making me 2.5%. No, it's potentially saving you 2.5%, but every dollar you deploy, regardless of where you deploy it, has one of two expenses. It either has an opportunity expense, right? These two side by side, opportunity expense. Right below the 60, is that good? Yep. Okay. And then next to it, right, uh, call it a, a deployment expense or opportunity expense or, um, yeah, that's fine, deployment expense. Okay. Okay, so your deployment expense, if you were to use that Forty thousand dollars there was two point five percent, or was was what? It was that we deployed that money to save two point five percent. So write two point five percent underneath there. Under under deploy. Okay. Save two point five percent. Yeah, we've saved two point five percent. So it. just write two. So we're making technically in our minds we're making two point five percent. Okay. Right. So if I'm not paying it, then then I, I'm keeping it. That's that's the mindset. Right. Now, this what did we just say? Deploy did, means this is me paying into the mortgage. Correct. Got so it. every time I every time I, I spend an extra dollar, every time I make an extra payment, every time I make bi-monthly payments, every time I make um, a extra payment on a 15-year mortgage instead of a 30-year mortgage, every time that I put extra money that is going into the principal, then I am buying down my equity. And every time I'm buying down that equity, then I'm saving myself whatever the cost of the of the interest is, right? Yep, that's the okay. uh, mindset. Sure. So let's keep going. Now the question is, what am I actually making on equity? So that actual the you know I'm saving two point five percent, but does equity make any difference in the valuation of the piece of real estate? The answer is no. You see, if I have a $100,000 house and it appreciates to $150,000, did that have anything to do with the amount of equity that I had in the house? No. No. So it actually didn't make us anything. So if it's not making us anything and it's actually just going into the mortgage, then the question is, well, I'm saving 2.5%, but what am I also doing? I'm also losing the opportunity to make more. And I'm also incurring another expense. Ah, What's the expense I'm incurring? The fact that I'm uh, inflation. Okay. 
I was going to say cash flow. Yep, well, that too. But we'll get there in a minute. Okay. So, ca so inflation. So if I'm making, aka saving 2.5%, however, I am losing, and I'll Forward. go conservatively 6%, so put minus 6% underneath our deployment expense. Got it. Then my net is that every time I put a dollar into my mortgage, I'm losing 3.5% every year. Hmm. And this is, this is what I've been working on trying to make sense of when I am talking to my, my clients that have approached that stage where all they have left is the mortgage. Cause I'm, I'll, I'll, I'm all in, in favor of wiping out high interest debt with high p monthly payments, which could redirect so much cash flow to position us better without a doubt. And it also releases stress. But then I get to this point, the mortgage or a, a high student loan debt, we're talking multiple six figures. And the concept of velocity banking only makes sense for a very short period of time and, and um, or debt snowball, debt, ever, de debt acceleration. It only makes sense in my mind for a period of time mathematically then it just it just boils down to the the moral value of where that person lies and i try not to interrupt that so when i have a client they come to say i don't i don't care about what you're talking about in 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 10x world and making more money i just want to be debt free leave me alone i just want to be debt free and i'm with those people i'm just like okay cool well here's the fastest mathematical way to to do that um and but here is your cost to also do that. So I always show the I try to show the options, um, but I really like the way you're you're doing this because I haven't used this angle uh, just yet. So I appreciate you sharing that. So we're losing three and a half percent when we do this, w whatever, so whatever, far. whatever method we're using sure. To, sure. to pay down yeah. debt. So, you know, when when you say somebody comes to you and says they're looking at you know this particular situation, this is the formula. So I hope I'm not getting too deep here because I'm giving you some, that this is kind of 201 stuff. No, but, this, is, this is really good. I'm learning a lot and this is going to help me get better. So I appreciate it. So the question is for every dollar you're deploying, then it's going down. And let's take the person that you just mentioned that says, yeah, I don't care though. I want to be debt free. Okay. The question is what way is going to get you the, there the quickest. So let's say that you do want to be completely debt free. You do want to completely pay off the house and AKA create a firewall, right? We talked about that. Mm -hmm. Create a firewall. The question is, which way is going to get you there the quickest? If every dollar you're putting in is actually costing you three and a half percent. How can that possibly be the fastest way to, you know, pay that off and become debt free? Right. So the question is, is there other ways that are going to be faster? Can you, can you find an opportunity that is going to provide you with better than a negative three and a half percent return mm, all day? <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe I mean, right. you gotta, you gotta factor in once again, we're using inflation there. So if you say, yeah, I mean, I could go get a, a bond and do 2%. Yeah. yeah but 2% minus the 6% mm. is minus 4%. Gotcha. Right. Yep. So we got to compare apples to apples. I'm giving you a real balanced perspective here, but if you're able to get, let's say you got 5%, well, you're losing 1%. It's still better, but it's still not good. Correct. So the question is, can you do better than that? Absolutely. There's lots of ways you can do better than that. So the trick is it's things like this that we have been taught are what we're supposed to do first. And we spend so much time and energy pouring our assets, pouring our hard earned dollars into things that don't make us any money. And you say, yeah, but Joe, every time I pay down the dollar, the, the, the mortgage, it makes me safer, right? That's the, the theory.